Hi, Diane Want. Welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be a two-part series. Um, we're going to be talking about should pastors be involved in politics of their day. So first of all, disclaimer. This channel is a commentary channel where I share my opinions, okay? And I'm not responsible for your feelings or how you respond to these opinions. So if you easily get triggered, I would advise that you go watch something else, all right? But if you want good conversations, okay, because this is what I love to do, I love to have this type of conversations, then keep on watching. If this is going to make you triggered, if you cannot have an intelligent conversation without insulting people, I would just suggest that you log out right now. Okay, so that being said, we are in election season in Nigeria and there's been a lot of talks about Christian leaders coming out to make statements, coming out to give predictions and prophecies. Um, a lot of people did not like some of the prophecies. A lot of people were like, oh, pastors should not involve themselves in politics. They should not have opinions. They should not talk about it. They should just stay on their pulpits and pray. Then there were some pastors who did not want to be seen to be on any side, so they just stayed in the middle, okay? Now, the polity in Nigeria, this election is different from every other type of elections that we have experienced because, because of the composition of the country in Nigeria. I won't say Nigeria is special because there have been other countries who have similar compositions like um, the former um, Southern Sudan and Northern Sudan. Um, they used to be one country, but they've gone their separate ways. Okay, so Nigeria has something similar with that in the sense that the southern part of the country is majorly Christian, while the northern part of the country has um, the Muslim religion as the dominant religion there, while you have pockets of Christians um, in the northern part of the country. Now, you have um, a leading political party who decides to field two Muslims as their vice, as their president, uh, president, um, presidential candidate, as well as their vice presidential candidate. All right. So, being a country that is heated up, okay, with a lot of religious undertone, not a lot of people took that lying down because it almost looks like you are disrespecting um, the people of the other faith in this country because there's a silent code of um how will i there's a silent agreement so to speak that okay if you have a a christian president you have a muslim vice president and th this thinking is what we in nigeria we have something called like a quota system okay that is governed not based on merits but based on your religion or the part of the country you are from. Let me deviate a bit. I remember I had my jurisprudence lecturer in school, Professor Yala Jimmy, so rest in peace. Um, then he would say that, um, because down south, you have lecturers who would say, oh, first class is for God, two one is for whoever. And he kept arguing then that um, he lectured in the northern part of Nigeria for many years. And they would give, in quotes, like just give people first class degrees. Because first of all, if you are going for a job interview, they don't want to know what is up there. Is what is on your certificate. That is first of all, like first of all, get a chance to get to the door first based on what is on your certificate before, before they begin to ask you questions. Then they will not know, okay, this person is really not a good fit for this role, right? So he used to argue then that that was just um, Southerners not understanding the dynamics of the country that we live in. So that's on one hand. Now, um, with respect to the issue at, on, on ground, that should pastors be involved in the polity of the nation? Um, okay, so let's use the case in point of Pastor Chris Oyakilome. 
um, he was having a meeting in his church where he was praying and prophesying and giving like some direction to his church members on what God had shown him. All right. Then you also have um, a case of um, the leader of the Redeemed Christian Church, um, Baba Iye Adeboye, coming out to say that um, God had not spoken to him, to his congregation, right? Let's, let's put that in perspective. It was his congregation members he was speaking to. God had not revealed to him um, who the president would become and any other prophecy you hear was going to be fake. Anyway, he was referring to his congregation members. Um, then you also have um, the pastor, the leader of the House of the Rock Church, Reverend Paul Adifarasin. He also came out and said that, oh, um, made statements like, before David was enthroned, Saul had to t was on the throne, right? And people were mad at that because we are in a season where young people are dissatisfied with everything that is going on in the country, all right? So people were like, what do you mean by that? What exactly are you trying to say? Who is the soul? Da, 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 da. That's on one hand. Then you have also, um, I won't call them pastors, you have prophets who have come out to give predictions to their church members that they made available to the public that um, this is what God had shown them about the elections and how the proceedings of the elections was going to go on. Now, the whole thing is um, polarized because there are different people. There are some people who feel like uh, there are people who were pushing the arguments that as Christians, um, regardless of what the political outcomes of the elections are, um, is, it doesn't really affect you as a Christian because God is still in control. And there are some other people who are like, no, you Christians need to be involved in the political machinery of the country. I know there are some other people who say that, well, there are Christians who have gotten into politics and... Um, they sell out, let me use that word, they sell out, okay, because politics is a dirty game. Now, the, the whole thing is just polarizing. So I want to share my thoughts, okay, and these are my thoughts. Like I started, well, like I gave the disclaimer when I started, these are my thoughts and we can agree to disagree. Um, so when it comes to church and states, there has been an age-long argument on should church be involved in happenings of the states, okay? Um, at some point in countries like the UK, America, there had to be like a distinction between church and states, right? However, however, I do not think that pastors or Christian leaders should not be involved in the political um, discussions in their days. Now, there are, there are different types of pastors. Um, there are some pastors who are naturally inclined, okay, to want to be involved in the um, political discussions of their days, okay, and there are some people who that's not, they are, they are not interested in all of that. They just want to pray for people. They just want to serve their people. And that's also fine, okay? But when a person is inclined in that manner, I don't think it is right for them to be vilified. I don't think it is right for people to say that, oh, you should not speak about the happenings of what is going on in your environment, okay? Because... It is when you have a peaceful nation that you can worship in peace. If bombs are flying everywhere, who is going to gather in church? Nobody is going to gather in church. Okay, and I also believe that um, Christian leaders, Christians themselves, should be involved in decision making in their in, in in their country because when people say politics is dirty there's politics everywhere there's politics in a small family there, i have a little child um of four years old 
And I can tell that that boy is a politician to the core <laughs> because the way he would want to maneuver everybody, I'll be looking at who is this rat? But I can tell that this is a politician to the core. And we play politics here, yes, say this one, yes, say that one. I was like, what's going on here? So there's, there's politics everywhere. As long as you have more than two or three people in a place, there's going to be politics, okay? So we cannot run away from political conversations and think that we are being spiritual by not being involved. Now, human beings are human beings, and sometimes permutations may not always go in the directions that um, we all think. Because, look, even if somebody is a daddy geo or whatever, everybody has an interest, and there are, there are going to be times where you are not always in the spirit, okay? And you can make wrong judgments. But should that now stop pastors, Christian leaders from being involved? No, not at all. Because when we remove ourselves from such things and we now begin to see things that we don't like, okay? It's not everything that... There's a place for prayer and there's a place for doing the dirty work okay so these are my own personal opinions like i like i used to tell you guys i'm a student of history i love to read history i remember reading a lot about billy graham and how he was involved in the democratic party and support of certain presidential candidates in america and there were times that he made mistakes okay and people called him out so but it didn't stop him from being involved, okay, in um, the political discourse in his country. Also, I also, um, I think I read about Pat Robertson, the founder of 700 Club, and how he contested for um, presidential, he was a presidential candidate in America at some point because he genuinely felt like God told him to contest, da, 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 da. He ended up not winning, but he was in the race, do you understand? So um, that being said, I don't think that um, Christian leaders should not be involved in the political conversation because beyond, yes, we are first of all Christians, all right, but you are also citizens of a nation. And if decisions are being made in the environment that you live in, you should have a say. All right, just the same way the next person has a say on what goes on, each and every one of us should have a say. And that's why um, civilization, societies are built on the principles of justice, fairness, and equity. Now, if you are not involved, then what legitimacy would you have to demand for certain things? Because there will always be people with their own interest. Everybody has their own interest, okay? If, you, if the other people are able to organize themselves to push their own agenda, you just hiding under your church or hiding in your prayer house is not going to push your own agenda. It is what it is, okay? So... All those talk of uh, whether somebody wins or not, God is uh, God is still in control. But is God going to go to the market to go and buy a bag of rice at at the cost because of inflation? No, that's 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 my own. If I want to buy baby milk, is God going to come from heaven to come and buy baby milk for me? No, it's not going to come from heaven. So I need to be involved in the decision making process of my day in order to be able to fulfill God's assignment for my life. And I, I understand that different people are called for different things, all right? You may be called to do your pastoring and all of that, but don't vilify people who are Christians or who have a heart for God who want to get into these dirty places, okay? Because it takes certain people to keep things together for you to be able to have your worship. I was reading, um, um, was I reading? Or I, I, I love to listen to Jewish rabbis um, these days. I was telling my husband the other day that I find it so hard to listen to a lot of pastors that I grew up genuinely. I just listen to Jewish rabbis. I connect to what they are saying, right? And one particular rabbi was talking about how 
in Eastern Europe at some point because um, church had this philosophy that you had to embrace poverty to be able to show your piety or your spirituality that the Jews had to step in and begin to do things that other people wouldn't want to do. For instance, becoming money lenders, um, Shylocks, okay? <laughs> because other people, because other Christians would not want to do it. And that's the thing. There's no vacuum in, in on the earth plane. So if there's vacuum for good political leadership, you would have bad people, you have evil people. Not everybody is 100% good in this world, but you need people who have an inclination, okay, to fulfill your own interests to a certain level. Everybody has an interest. It is only in Nigeria that Christians don't have their own interest. We, don't, we are ruderless. We don't know what we want. That, this is my own personal opinions okay so share with me your thoughts should christians be involved in political conversations or should they just hide in their churches and be praying and looking for a messiah to come and help them anyway i'm going to do a part two all right continuing this conversation but we are going to be talking about did pastor kojo yemade um, make Peter be popular because that's a, that's 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 a conversation that is currently going on. Please like this video if you are not yet subscribed to the channel. Do subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.